will this 6650 right here from MSI, the mech, will this actually fit? This looks like it might be, might be compatible. Oh my God, is this gonna actually work? No way. I don't wanna get my hopes up because I already I feel something hitting right here, but oh my God, it's slotted in, you guys. It works. What's going on everybody? Welcome to the video that I know a lot of you have been waiting for for like probably a couple of years since I stopped making Optiplex videos. This is the Dell Optiplex 7040 mini tower. So a lot of you have been asking me to step into this generation of Optiplex and for a long time I didn't want to do it because A, a lot of proprietary stuff going on here. It's not very easy to mod. Well, I thought so, but I did a lot of research before I made this video and now I think there's a lot of things that we actually can do it and we'll get into that. But also, the cost has significantly come down. I've been able to find these for a very, very good price because of how updated these motherboards are. You're now on a DDR4 system. You can actually put a lot stronger of a graphics card in it, much newer graphics card these days, and make this a much more solid gaming system than the past generations of Optiplex that really are kind of outdated at this point. So, the point of today's video, we're gonna basically do a ton of mods and see how far we can take this thing. So we'll hop right into it after we talk to our sponsor. With VIP URCD key, you can install and activate Windows for only 16 bucks. Hey, that's pretty good. It's fast, easy, and 100% legit. You can now enter my new promo code for 2023, RAV25, which will now save you 25% on your purchase. So get rid of that Windows activation watermark and get your system activated today. It also works for Windows 11 as well. Check the links in the description. Okay, so why did I choose the 7040 and not the 7050 or 7060? Well, really it just came down to price. Honestly, I was able to find this system right here with an i7-6700, 16 gigs of RAM, and just a, a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD uh, that they, they typically come with on these systems. So I was able to get like the basic things that I really wanted out of this system, which was at least a 6700 and 16 gigs of RAM. So I got that and we're, we're able to get that for just over $135. So for that, really good value. The other generations of system are a little bit more, I believe. If you wanna step up to the 7060, which has a much newer processor, I believe it has the uh, eighth, eighth gen, I believe they, they are called. They're the, like the 8700s, uh, the core i7 I 8700s. They run a little bit over $200 still. And I didn't wanna pay that much just to try this out. This is like a tryout video for this, this type of system to see if we actually can, you know, make this a solid gaming system. And if we do, maybe I'll buy the 7060 next. Let me know down in the comments if you guys wanna see me do that. But anyway, let me first go ahead and open this thing up with our top-down camera and show you guys what we're working with inside. Okay, now to open these up, these are a little different than the previous Occupuxes. You got this little lever here and then you gotta pop this guy open right here and this little piece comes off and you're left with this. Now, from here, you basically just pull this open. You don't gotta do anything else. You pretty much just do this and the guy opens up like that and this is how you see your internals right here. So hopefully you guys get a good view, video, or view of this. There we go, it's all the way open. So let me really quick start and let you guys know the upgrades that I plan to do today because why the heck not? So as you guys see over here, I have a random assortment of graphics cards that I already had on hand. They, they're going from large to small, or big, smallest to biggest, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, we have a whole stack of them to try to see what actually fits. I have a bunch. There you go, that's what I, I, they're just, again, not picked by any particular reason, just what I have on hand. So there's a lot of cards that will work in this system. And I know you guys are gonna comment after I'm doing this, asking me which cards are possible. I may have to do like a separate video just specifically explaining what graphics cards work. Doesn't matter. But what I actually wanna do is I wanna take the stock power supply out and I wanna replace it. So what I bought was this SFX power supply from Apivia. Now I haven't bought an Apivia product, I don't think, maybe ever. Uh, maybe my, something from one of my first PCs or something like that, possibly. But anyway, the reason we got this SFX one is because you actually need a SFX power supply to be able to fit in this case because this case is not wide enough this way, like, like depth wise, to fit a standard size power supply. But these little guys right here, these are absolutely the perfect size to fit in a case like this. 
and this thing has 500 watts of power in it so we can basically power a lot of different power or different graphics cards with that much extra power so first thing i want to do is figure out how to install this little guy into here now i watched a couple of videos on people that have done it already and it is possible you just kind of got to do a little bit of fan dangling All right, so the stock 240 watt power supply is out. Now, what you guys will notice right away if you guys are you know, familiar with PC building in any, in any sense of the word, you'll notice that for the main power, it has this eight pin right here, not a big 24 pin like most normal uh, power supplies have. So, and then also there's only a four pin right here for the CPU power. Now, you'll notice if you have like an upgraded uh, power supply, you'll probably notice the main power connector is a 24 pin and sometimes even the CPU power is an eight pin. Hopefully you get one, if you use the one that I'm using, it'll split into two four pins and that'll take care of the CPU power. But the big 24 pin, you gotta get yourself a little adapter for that. And it looks just like this. I'll link this in the description. This is a eight pin to 24 pin, uh, what do you call it, adapter right here. And these work for the older Optiplexes, but they also work for this model of Optiplex 2. It's the very same, it's like basically the same pin out. It works for a lot of different Dell computers and uh, it just basically modifies the eight pin to go into a standard 24 pin ATX um, power slot. So you basically just gotta take this guy and put it in place of the eight pin and your main power supply power connector now can go right into here into this guy. Um, to get this power supply to work, you're gonna need this adapter and we're gonna have to first see if we can put this new power supply in the case. So let's go ahead and try that. So here's the, uh, here's the new power supply. You can see it's very small and in this little space right down here, it fits in there perfectly. Like it just, it just sits. If you, you notice, if you have a standard ATX power supply, it would be coming out of here and it'd be actually too long this way too. This one specifically is actually short enough to where it'll just close, even with this, um, what do you call it? With this drive bay right here, there's a uh, SSD drive bay right here. You can delete that. I've seen a bunch of guys do that but you don't have to, it'll actually, it'll still close. Okay, next thing I wanna do is I wanna see if I can install an extra 80 millimeter fan right here. And looking at this, if we just move this right here, this little space in between these two drive bays is actually perfect to install a single fan. Now, if you were to take this out here or even this, you could probably put more in there. Um, I even bought two, but just for the sake of time, once again, look at this. It fits in there, like in that little slot, like perfectly. All right, so from right here, I was only able to get two of the holes to line up this corner, these two corners right here, but it does work. So check this out. This fan sits in there perfectly and it spins. Nothing blocking it, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, it works. So we just got a random fan in there now and that modification was super easy. You can just basically stick it in there and put some screws in. Very nice. All right, guys, next part, I wanna go ahead and see if we can do anything with this CPU cooler and replace that with our CPU cooler we bought right here. Now, I know this may require a bit more modification simply because I think the standoffs for this, for this motherboard are actually built into the case itself. So I may have to do some modification. So let's see if we have to actually do that. All right, I am just absolutely stoked that that worked and it's, you know, it's it's just, I don't know, man. 
It was that easy. Didn't have to replace the back plate, nothing. Otherwise, I would have taken the whole motherboard out and that would have sucked. Let's go ahead and start wiring this thing up. So first thing, where's my adapter at? So here's, you gotta take that adapter that I told you guys about. And we're gonna want to basically just connect these together right where the hooks are. See a little tick mark? Make sure you guys put those together, just like that. And then this goes right back into the power, or not the power supply, sorry, the motherboard. And bam, that's done. And you can kind of fold that up and, you know, cable manage it however you want to do it. I'm not going to make this, like, exceptionally nice looking. I'm going to do it as best as I can. But uh, I'm just going to kind of wire it all up and then we're going to test it and see if it works. So here is the CPU power connector. Now, I knew this was going to happen. This is why I bought an extension. So see this? This cable is actually, like, barely long enough. It doesn't even look like it is long enough to fit to get to that thing up there. So I bought an I did buy an extension and we're gonna actually use it. So let me go, again, I will link the extension down in the description below, so you guys can buy it too, because I, I figured this cable was gonna be a little small. But it's, an actu it's actually a splitter um, to go ahead and do this right there. But for me, it's gonna act as an extension, and it does, again, split into four on each side right there. So now I can kind of put this right here, cable manage this, and make it look all nice like that I actually use the the cases uh, built-in cable management which is kind of cool and we'll do this and then it should have plenty of space to get up here and go on in and you guys may or may not be able to see this because it's kind of it's it's right there it's kind of tucked away a little bit but I'm just gonna you know do my best to try to get this in there with you guys being able to see it there you go Bam, it's in there. <laughs> yeah, I know that wasn't like the best tutorial, but you know, you guys get the idea. Let me go ahead and get that back into view so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, this has the option of being an actual a three pin or a Molex, which because this power supply is supposed to, it's probably, I, I imagine it's meant to work with like older systems like this. Um, it does have Molex support, so we can just connect it to a Molex connector and it'll just work that way. I hate using Molex, but I don't see another, uh, what do you call it? I don't see another fan connector, so I'm gonna just go ahead and use this. And it should work just fine. There we go, bam, connected, and we're done with that. Okay, and so what we need to do, I believe next is, well, graphics card is last. We do have one SSD, and this is simply just to load our games up. And so this is a good, a good way for me to show you how to connect the SSDs and everything too. Um, what I'm gonna do, because I want, as much space as I possibly can have for the actual graphics card. I'm gonna connect the SSD to like number, let's see, number zero here. SATA zero, I guess you'd call it. Let's connect that and then kind of route this underneath here. And I am gonna go ahead and just take the, I'm gonna take the SSD and honestly just chuck it into the SSD bay here because the, um, and I'm, I'm not even gonna, you know, cinch it down or anything. I'm just gonna kind of let it sit there. Okay, with the power supply in and everything wired up as it should be right now, hopefully, uh, then the only next thing to do here is to go ahead and test which graphics cards will actually work. So I know like these low profile cards, these will work 100%. So much space for those, but we can do better than a 1650. Now here's a 570. I know this RX 570 will work as well. It's got plenty of space. And it's got, you know, we have a connector for it. Uh, the, like I said, the 1060 will work. But let's go, why don't we go bigger? Let's go like as big as we possibly can. So here is that RX 580 that I did a video on, the, the 2048 stream processor one that I got off of Amazon. Will this fit? Let's check that. So it looks like size-wise it should. Let me see if it'll actually slot in here. I, mean, I might actually have to get up and look at this because I can't see what I'm doing. The only thing that might hinder us with these cards are like the back plates of the cards and stuff. Those always get in the way. There we go. Okay, so that actually, man, even with this adapter, that slots in perfectly. So here's where we're gonna see uh, which cards actually fit and why. Because, there, see this little spot right here? There is the eight pin, so this shroud fits perfectly. Like it's literally like right up against it. So this card fits absolutely perfect in this case right here. But I wanna see if we can actually go bigger because I do have a 6650 XT right here that might just fit. Now I'm gonna show you something that I know is not gonna fit. Here is, 
This is actually only, this is an RTX 3050, and this would actually be kind of cool to test in this system. I would love to test, test an RTX card, but this, I know for a fact, it's too big. Yeah, there's no way this is gonna fit and actually close in the case. So here's the issue, first of all, is this, the shroud. See how, see how this is hitting here? It's not gonna fit there. And then also, this will never close. There's no way. There's no way it'll close if you have this in there. And it's not because of the fan I put in there. It's just not gonna, there, there's not enough space right here for that to close. So we know that's not gonna fit. Now, will this 6650 right here from MSI, the mech, will this actually fit? This looks like it might be, might be compatible. Oh my God, is this gonna actually work? No way. I don't wanna get my hopes up because I already I feel something hitting right here, but oh my God, it's slotted in, you guys. It works. That, it barely works. This is probably, this right here is probably maxed out of what you wanna do for length of a card. Let me, do you guys want me to measure it for you? This specific card, this 6650 XT is like, from the, sh the shroud out to here. Oh, it's actually longer than I told you guys. Hold on a second. It's actually like over nine inches long. It's like just over a tad, like a nine and like an eighth, I think, is long right there. So this actually does fit. It fits past, so what I was thinking in the beginning is you don't want it to be past this connector, but it actually sits right there and it works. Okay, now will this close? That's the big, that's the big thing. Oh my God, I think it will. Okay guys, we're in my testing room here. I got it all hooked up. Now, the power is turned on. I already powered it on one time. I cheated a little bit because I wanted to make sure that at least I had everything in there like to a point where it would actually somewhat work or just not turn, out, turn on if we didn't have enough power. But it seems to be with this little mini power supply, you have to mount it with the fan facing upwards, pulling air down. Uh, if you mount it the other way, the fan starts making this weird clicking noise. Not good, it's not hitting anything. Just the, the fan itself inside is that maybe the bearings are pulling down or something and you just can't do it that way. So I have it pulled out just, just, to, just to be safe, but let me show you guys right here. The power button does work and it will boot right back on. So yeah, the little RGB fan spinning, it's pretty cool. It actually makes it look a little, little more gamery, I guess. And it's quiet. I mean, here. Both fans are spinning, front one and the rear one. All right, guys, got everything set up, got all the all the stuff we needed installed on the PC. Now, what we're gonna do real quick is actually launch uh, 3D Mark and do like a time spy run real quick to stress the computer and just make sure that there's no power issues, nothing crazy going on, and we'll actually be able to run some games. So, let's run this real quick and see the results right about. And bam, there it is. And so, we got a time spy score of 8,038. So. It's not, it's not the best. I mean, it's all right though. So it, it did better than I thought. Temperatures were not terrible, especially CPU temperature, everything like that, and GPU temperature, they were great. So other than that, I think we're good to start testing some games. All right guys, and first we're gonna go ahead and start with some Doom Eternal because this game is like really well optimized and it's honestly usually just a fun game to test with a lot of PCs. So let's go ahead and go to our first mission here and see what the computer can do. All right, hopping into our first scene here, and it looks like we are getting somewhere upwards of even like 200 FPS. Oh my lord! I knew this was going to happen. You see that? It just spiked up to 220. Holy crap! Uh, definitely, we're, we're probably losing out on some frames because we, uh, yeah, our CPU is is being utilized so much, and uh, you can see right there, right, right as all this stuff is happening. Yeah, our GPU usage is dropping lower, and our CPU usage was a little bit higher even. So. Yeah, when that happens, it typically means you're CPU bound and you're you're losing some frames because you're you're uh, you know you're bottlenecked by your CPU if you have a lower end one like we do right here. So either way, still a great gaming experience. We're still able to stay like even when it drops, it's like at 150 and all that. So look at this, we can do some crazy crap right there. We're getting 200 FPS. This is pretty awesome, man. Um, so even for a game like this, where like a lot of games, you know, a lot of fun, fast paced games, you know, would would act like this. So um, great showing right here for the first game we're gonna test. All right, guys, so here we are in Apex Legends, and we're running 1080p, basically high settings right here. Um, and, you know, pretty much everything's just set on, like, the high preset. So let's see what we can get here in the, I guess it's like their deathmatch mode. So uh, I know nothing about this game, really. I, I suck at it every time I test it. Um, but it is more of like a, I would say, a mid-tier test of this hardware right here. 
<laughs> even in the middle okay so there was a big frame dip right there i don't know if that was you know server lag or the actual pc but um we're, we're still getting above even when it's doing stuff like that we're getting above it 100 fps it looks like so this is a really really good gaming experience guys i can actually maybe try to shoot some yeah get you know get some damage going there nice oh i'm gonna get killed here if i don't move let's let's <laughs> let's go over here do i have a grenade i do throw that but yeah, either way, you can see that this game is definitely more uh, CPU bound as our, our 6700 is really taxed in this game. Um, we're, we're absolutely, yeah. If we had a stronger CPU, we'd probably be getting some more frames or even a steadier frame rate. But because our CPU is definitely not being utilized as much, um, yeah. It's, uh, or a GPU, sorry, is not being utilized as much. It's uh, it's it's taken away from our, our, our possible frame rate that we could be getting should we have you know had a, a stronger computer so either way though it's still a good gaming experience nonetheless i mean part of it right there when there was less people on the screen i was getting up to 144 right there do you guys see that this is actually not bad at all let's see if i can go let's see if i can actually get a kill i didn't use my shield at all though which is bad oh god either way i can retake all that hold on all right, so I'm just going to put on some armor here and try to be an actual, like, team player and help my team here. But, guys, as you can see, this game is definitely more uh, CP sorry, yeah, CPU bound, um, and that's why I wanted to test it. Oh, we got a guy coming in. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm messing him up right there. Sweet. But as I was saying, uh, our GPU is not being utilized as much um, simply because this game takes advantage more of your CPU. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's just if we would have had something stronger than the 6700, this game probably would be able to, you know, maybe even lock at 144 with this with this graphics card. But uh, either way, still a very good gaming experience for this game right here. And, you know, if you guys play similar games to this, which I'm sure a lot of you do, um, especially if you're building a system like this, then, you know, you guys will be doing just fine. All right, guys. And we are in a really, really, you know, taxing scene right here. There's a, there's a bunch of people on, on screen. There's a bunch of crap going on, a um, bunch of graphically demanding things going on, on screen. So I figured this was a pretty easy test of cyberpunk right here. Now in the game, we're going to be using uh, high the high preset right here at 1080p with FSR on quality. Um, and as you can see, if we go back to the game, textures look really nice. Um, the people's um, people's faces look really good. There's no weird halo effect or anything like that on stuff. So uh, in this particular scene, things look good. There's good lighting and everything. So we are definitely, you know, limited by our CPU, um, which which seems to be a common theme uh, for the higher end games with this system right here. So um, if you're looking to play more higher end games, maybe uh, upgrading the, you know, upgrading to the, uh, the 7060 or even upgrading just the CPU to the later gens. Um, would maybe be beneficial for you but either way this is still great we're still getting like over 80 fps in this game right here so uh even though we weren't able to test cyber or, sorry S starfield because it decided to keep crashing on me um we can definitely discern that that game probably would run um we, we'd just probably be able to play it at like 1080p medium or something like that and you know get somewhere over 30 fps hopefully but either way um, it's looking like this computer, for, for what I paid for it, it's, it's looking like a really great value. Okay, everybody, so what have we learned today? We have learned that I was dead wrong about this series of Octiplexes, and I don't know why I didn't figure out the fact that I needed to mod some of these sooner. So you guys were right, I was wrong, and uh, I might have to do a couple more of these, like even the 7050 or the 7060, and see what we can get with those, because those are even stronger systems, the CPUs are better, and I bet you they can push the frames even higher in a lot of the games that we were testing. So yeah, either way, money-wise, I did a little calculating here. So just for the system itself, the power supply, and like the fans and the CPU fan, it was like $186. That's it, because the power supply itself was only 35 bucks. Usually F SFX power supplies are very expensive. This Apivia one is not, and I'll leave the link in the description. All the stuff I use today will be in the description so you guys can do it if you guys want to as well. Um, if you guys want to add a graphics card, it's really going to depend on which one you use, but if you want specifically like the one that I use right here, you can get that one on eBay for like, I think $200, maybe $210 or something like that, sometimes even less. So if you add that to it, 380, 300 and like under $400, guys, $380, $390, you got yourself a system that can play Cyberpunk, you can play uh, Apex, which means you'll be able to play pretty much any game out there. Um, I know you probably can play Starfield. For some reason, like today, it was just crashing. I don't know why, it's probably just the specific hardware setup, and it, it just, I don't know, it was probably my save game or something. Um, 
but I've played Starfield on a PC that had worse specs than this, and uh, you'd be able to play at like 1080p medium probably, um, and it would get somewhat respectable FPS because we are using an AMD GPU, and those seem to be favored in that particular game. So either way, guys, let me know what you think of this video, and let me know if you, if you like what I did to this Dell Optiplex 7040, and uh, how happy you are to finally see me working on an Optiplex again. But Again, show me if you guys like this, make sure you guys give me a like, and then if you guys really enjoyed this, you guys want to really thank me in the right way, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're new, and uh, turn those notifications on, so you'll always be notified on more tech content like this when it comes out. But, till the next video, I'll catch you guys later.